This is where the fun begins. Clear eyes, full hearts, get lost. King Kong ain't got shit on me! And here we go. <laughs> Hi, hello, everybody. I know it's been a couple of weeks, but we're back, and we've got a fun fun thing we've got a fun double feature for everybody today um yeah, but catch up. <laughs> yeah it's been <laughs> i've been out of town got back in town and then i had friends come in from out of town and like i've just been so tired yeah i'm, I'm very happy <laughs> but i'm just very tired <laughs> um but uh if you guys are new my name is jessica lemon like the fruit and then we have <laughs> um, Derek myers at I can't compare that to anything. <laughs> <laughs> like Michael Myers. Like Michael Myers. You know what? And I actually joked different. around. No, it's still, it's about the same. I but yes. um yeah, but I, I always joked that I would name if I had a son, I would name him Michael. Oh God, don't be that guy. <laughs> oh no. Unless his birthday like is Halloween, like nah. Hey, look, I'm gonna tell you right now, if I do have a son and his birthday is Halloween or at least the day prior to it. Michael. It might, might be Michael. Michael, Michael I, I was joking around, but it might, I might. Just it go, might actually it be might a thing. Actually be Michael, yeah, that might actually be a thing. So that would be the only appropriate time <laughs> yeah. to I mean, name that. And baby. think of the, think of think of the Halloween costumes. Oh just my God, he'd be set for life. Hilarious, yeah. No, just grow Ooh. up and just wear the same he'd be costume. Like, oh, every like, year. He'd be like, hey, who are you? And he'll be like, just. <laughs> I myself, I'm Michael Myers. And be like, what? I thought that Michael Myers mask. And he's like, wanted to be. Pulls out like machetes. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh boy. Um, but yeah, if you guys are new, um, we talk about movies and we usually do some like entertainment news. Um, we'll do some news. Maybe we'll talk about like our favorite like movies or something um but just because we're a little bit behind on our reviews we wanted to just kind of do a double feature today we're going to be talking about two movies one of which we've been trying to talk about for weeks um but we just like things keep getting in the way or like we get really caught up in the news stories so that we're talking yeah. about the news stories for two hours yeah. and we're like oh god uh, <laughs> probably should cut things off here yeah. um so uh first we're going to talk about love and monsters um it is a 2020 film starring dylan o'brien and I love him so much. I do briefly want to mention slight news. Uh, Taylor Swift's new album came out. And so she's been releasing uh, basically like short films kind of with, mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, music videos, but they're also like kind of short films, but she did a, a release of her song all too well. That was a 10 minute version of the song. Oh, okay. Um, and she cast Dylan O'Brien and Sadie Sink um, as Sadie Sink was playing like a young Taylor Swift and mm. Dylan O'Brien is speculatively but literally playing uh, Jake Gyllenhaal um, from Taylor Swift's and Jake Gyllenhaal's uh, relationship when they were together. Wait, um, they were together? Yeah, they were together for it's been almost like 10 years, but they were together for only like a few months, but it was like one of those oh. like romances that like was like a big deal, but then it just kind of like went away um oh. but we don't we don't like him because of that it's okay he's a good actor and i enjoy his <laughs> films but i guess he's a not a great boyfriend or at least wasn't to her anyway um but uh so dylan o'brien started in that and like she's a genius because the casting for it like sadie sink is the redhead in uh that was in fear street she was the younger sister in Fear Street. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From yeah. Uh, Stranger Things. Stranger Things, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the whole big deal with Taylor and Jake Gyllenhaal was that, like, she was, like, 20 when they started dating, and he was, like, 30. So there was, like, a big age difference, and that was, like, a thing in Hollywood. Like, it's just a thing that in Hollywood people are dating people that are, like, huge age differences. And it's seen as, like, normal in Hollywood, Mm -hmm. And so when she cast Sadie Sink, who is 19, and Dylan O'Brien, who I believe is now 30, um, I think he's officially 30 years old now. Let me check really quick. Um, what is your birthday? I used to know his birthday because I was obsessed with him back in the, the uh, uh, Teen Wolf days. 
I love Dylan O'Brien so much. I've talked about him like a million times. Yeah, he's 30. So so he was 30 <laughs> this year. Um, so he's 30. She was 19, which is like the same age gap that um, uh, Sadie Sink and Dylan O'Brien are. Uh, or that's the Taylor Swift and Jake Gyllenhaal. So like, but when you see it, her most memorable role is like her as like a middle schooler on Stranger Things. So you remember her as like a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Dylan O'Brien one of his most memorable roles is uh teen wolf that he did like 10 years ago Mm -hmm. um not quite 10 years ago but like almost 10 years ago no actually like 10 years ago yeah that makes sense about 10 years ago on mtv teen wolf um as like a teenager and then you knew he was like in his 20s so it's like you knew he was like 10 years ago he was like 19 20 you know Mm -hmm. so you know that like now he's like 30 and you know that's and you just so you see him as like an adult and you see Sadie Sink still like as a child yeah um so it's like awkward seeing them on screen together because they're like making out and you're like ew why like she's so young <laughs> he's so old but it's like she's 19 and he's 30 and that's the same age that yeah. Taylor and Jake were but it was yeah. super normal in Hollywood blah, blah, blah. um but it was like a whole thing and I just wanted to talk about that really quick because we're talking about Dylan O'Brien anyway yeah and it was just brilliant it was so good it was wonderful and he plays the character so well because he's just a phenomenal actor oh so good i love him so much yeah um, I, I still i really don't know much about him outside of uh love but, and monsters <laughs> but you liked it though right <laughs> oh he did a good job he did a good job in the movie i yeah. i genuinely enjoyed this movie a lot um i 100 percent will watch it again if i think about it and i'm like oh i want to watch a movie but i'll watch love and monsters um it's a good movie it's based off a book series um oh is it mm-hmm. okay let me find um i thought i had it pulled up but i i, I think i accidentally closed it <laughs> and his uh co-star in here was uh jessica henwick who played amy um mm-hmm. the that's this is the lady that I was telling you about that i would have cast for i know hate yeah which yeah which is funny because i, I remember i was like is that is that who he was talking when, yeah. when i was watching i was like is that the same yeah. person i looked up and i was like i think it is <laughs> yeah 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 I, I absolutely love her she she's she's a she's a phenomenal um uh she's phenomenal at combat uh in in, in film where it doesn't look like it's choreographed yeah she she just she just flows with it mm-hmm. so yeah I, I i was glad to see a little bit of that in this film too you know what i'm saying yeah like that, that it's, was... it's like i'm just very impressed with everything <laughs> yeah because <laughs> like the visual effects in it were phenomenal like when you think about like cgi and like how to incorporate properly into like a film Mm-hmm. um and it not be like cheesy and then it still be a big part of a film um i think this one did it very well and so did the academy because they got nominated for an oscar for best um visual effects um yeah they, i mean they did a great job with it i mean it, so run down with the the um synopsis real quick okay okay oh no oh no there it is <laughs> it was loading and then it went away <laughs> Um, okay, so seven years after he survived the monster apocalypse, lovably hapless Joel leaves his cozy underground bunker behind on a quest to reunite with his ex. So, yeah, I, I, see, like the 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 way this whole thing started with this apocalypse was kind of mm-hmm. interesting because they so that they shot a they shot a uh it was like a rocket at a meteor or something like that mm-hmm. and then it basically just like it was like I'm just kidding you're you're all gonna die okay so let me let me read the actual like storyline here for you so seven years after after the monster apocalypse 
that was looking out the window. Joel Dawson, played by Dylan O'Brien, along with the rest of humanity, has been living underground ever since giant creatures took control of the land. After reconnecting over radio with his high school girlfriend, Amy, Jessica Henwick, who is now 80 miles away at a coastal colony, Joel begins to fall for her again. As Joel realizes that there's nothing left for him underground, he decides against all logic to venture out to Amy, despite all the dangerous monsters that stand in his way. The fun-filled and action-packed adventure also stars Michael Roker and Ariana Grenblatt. Pretty good. Ugh. So so they shot up a nuclear rocket at, the, at this meteorite right? Because that's whatever they shot up mm-hmm. came back down and, and infected the creatures so basically what it was it was like some it was almost like a like a like a bioweapon kind yeah, of thing yeah so yeah. that caused instead of causing people it didn't harm people it harmed or it didn't even harm them but it just like mutated wildlife essentially so which like, i'm still confused re- about well it was like it reptilians not- and stuff and worms and, and snails. Yeah, so like insects, um, yeah. insects, and like like I think I think it was like cold blooded, like cold blooded things. Um, okay. So like insects, reptiles, that kind of stuff. Because um, people were fine. Dylan's Dogs character fine. Do- had a dog, um, which like made me so nervous the whole movie because I was like, this dog, oh my god. Oh, I there, see. I'm different. I love dogs, okay? I, yes. I, I love them. But mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you right now, if I go out on 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 a, a, a an adventure, quote unquote, like 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 he did, mm-hmm. and I gotta choose between me and the dog, that's not even a choice. <laughs> that dog it's is like, sacrificed so fast. <laughs> I'm like, I like if it was me and Bowie, because he is my he is my yeah child. Yeah. Um, and I had, there was a way to save him. I would mm-hmm. absolutely save him. Um, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like what he does. Cause he's like, he's like, it's fine. Whatever. Like, I don't need this dog. Like, it's not like my dog, whatever. But yeah. then he's like, but I have to help it. And, you know, like it, it's like, so then I he like, ends up falling in love that. with this dog and it's like <laughs> his best friend. I would not have had that, that conflict. Oh, not, my goodness. This is a I dog he just been. met. This is not this is not his actual dog. You know what I'm saying? I know, but like that this dog is... was like, you're my person now. And he was like, all right. Nah. Nah. Dude, nope. I was almost late to work today because Bowie did not want to get out of bed and he was like plopped along me. And I was like, do I have to like send a picture of you not letting me get up to my boss to tell her that I'm gonna be late? Because like that's probably what I'm gonna have to do. And he was just like, mm-hmm. I'm not getting up, which means you're not getting up. And then he really didn't. I like got up, got ready for work. And he was just like, fine, I'm just gonna stay here. And then like when I was leaving, he was like coming to, he was like, wait, you're leaving? Not, you're not bringing me with you? I'm like, no, dude, I gotta go to work. When I came home, he was still curled. He came, he, he was back curled up on bed. And like, just now was like the first time he's like gotten up to do anything. And it was when Octavio came to get the car to go to work. Yeah. I <laughs> would not be able to leave him. I'd be very sad if something happened. Like if it became like, I don't know, like the world was like burning and we're like running, you know, and he's like behind me somehow because he runs fast. So he'd be like ahead of me. But if he's some behind me somehow and I'm running and like the world's crashing and he falls into it, I'm going to be like really sad. But I, and like, I can't help him. But like, if I have the ability to possibly help him and like us both make it out, I think I would try. I'm not saying I wouldn't be sad, but I'm sacrificing the dog, man. Like, <laughs> you're like, sorry, pup. Nah, bruh. Especially when I just met you. If you now, if you're my dog, and I've had you since you were a puppy, then okay, it might be might be a little that different. Might be different. That might be a little different, but because I can see the attachment. There is no yeah. attachment when I just met you. I. Uh, <laughs> I guess. You know what I'm saying? It's just. I mean, hey. but he's been like super lonely because he's like so. If you haven't watched the movie, which why are you listening to this? If you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's on Hulu. <laughs> like, take a couple hours, let's watch that, and then come back. Um, but he is the only single person in his like colony. Like everybody's all coupled up, and he's the only like yeah. single dude there. So yeah. he's just like a super lonely dude, and this dog shows up and is like, "Hey, I'm gonna be your best friend." And he's like, "Shit, all right." <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> well, it's like, okay, cool. Like, I get it. I, I get. See, him being single and watching all, like everybody in his colony 
boot up and you know kissing mm-hmm. and all that stuff like i get why because i mean like especially when his when his his girl is in a different colony yeah i get it like i get it but i get that's the reason why he it, it propelled him to go on this 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 hike to yeah find this her. like journey yeah because like, i think about it it's like 80 miles i'm like damn that's really not that far but at the same time like it definitely is but when you're walking it is when you're walking it yeah, yeah so it took that's... him like a week or so to make that journey and like it's yeah. something that like nobody had ever done or whatever because nobody could really go anywhere because everything was ginormous like right snails were like crazy creatures frogs were these like crazy crabs were literally like the size of boats like crazy sizes on stuff and then so what are your thoughts on like him so like the movie starts off basically with them like in a car basically at like a makeout point or whatever and they're just like in the car mm-hmm. and then suddenly you just see all these like bombs or whatever hitting the earth and you're like well i guess this is it yeah and then they go off um she drops him off at home and then she goes to like her family or whatever and they're like we'll see each other again i love you and then it's like seven years later and like he's still kind of hung up on her and i was like thinking about it like before we got to him actually making it to her colony Mm -hmm. i was like does she like even like this it's been like seven years like the way she's talking doesn't make it seem that she's like super interested in him nah it's just it it literally sounded like she just like had a friend to speak to yeah like Like it wasn't like that oh my god like i wish i could see you like you're so far away like you're so close but you're so far away like i miss you so much like it was none of that like it was like yeah like i miss you too at the same time though that's what seven eight years has gone by yeah so like i get it i I get it you know you obviously you're not going to be because i mean like from what it seems like waiting yeah from what it seems like he wasn't necessarily like waiting but he also like wasn't like looking for anybody obviously you're in an apocalypse so it's like you couldn't really do too much there um so i think when the prospect of like the last person he loved like pops up and he's like oh my god like i loved this girl like i miss her so much like our relationship was you know great when we had it yeah but but here's the thing like when see in my mind (laughs) the way i'm thinking about these things is if you're in this colony for seven to eight years you ain't seen your girl that long right Mm -hmm. everybody's already with someone Mm -hmm. why not wait until someone is killed because honestly this is not like a time where people are expected to live long yeah well i mean we saw that we saw that in the beginning like they would go out like like two or three guys that took it out yeah so, in like a couple minutes so it's yeah. like it happens yeah. and then it leaves other people like being single but also like i don't know humans maybe it's different if you're in like that kind of situation because it's like we have to like repopulate basically but also like i don't know maybe they just didn't like like each other like that and they weren't just like well we're just gonna do this have much of a choice well if, yeah if 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 but they also weren't the only colony, so there was like a bunch the of only, other people. Well, they weren't the only colony, but they were. They it didn't seem like there was another colony that was like at least not close, not that close to them. I mean, you know, so if eighty miles, if no one's taking that journey, the entire time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just wait for someone to get killed. I yeah. like. I hate saying. <laughs> I say, hey, saying like that because it sounds very morbid. <laughs> and then it makes it sound like you're just going to like accidentally, you're plotting, like, a- you're yeah. plotting to like, all yeah. right, so like so and so, like, usually goes on these raids. I'm going to like <laughs> tamper with this shit so he gets killed so I can be with his girl. Well, see, like, here's the thing they already said that he was not equipped to go uh, uh, on like a journey uh, on those those trips with them to go yeah. hunt or or salvage whatever they can, they can salvage from anything in the in the surrounding area. So if all he's doing is staying in the colony and he's just cooking uh, and, and like cleaning up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, one of these days, one of these guys gotta go. I mean, like that's pretty much just how it is. Yeah. I just, but like, also I'm just thinking like, he 
had that whole mindset that if he got all the way there, she would be like falling for him again. And I like never got that. I like, I was like, I was like, why would he think that after all this time, like neither of you even knew each other were still alive? Like, why would you just think that suddenly this person would be like down to like be in a relationship with you again? Like, just because it's an apocalypse and you're both are alive. Okay. But like, there's also like other people and wherever they're at, like, what if they did find somebody and that we, we, we find that out that she really did find somebody and fell in love with them and probably was like, if circumstances were better, we would get married and have a baby and blah, blah, blah. Um, but then that person dies. So yeah. she's like sad and depressed. So and she's like, trying, and she's trying to work through the grieving process. Yeah. And, and she he's like, loved. yeah. And he's like, about me <laughs> <laughs> see, um, okay so let me ask you this because it didn't strike me as if they had been together for a long time before this apocalypse yeah that's hit. i didn't really think that either because they were supposed to be like teenagers like 16 yeah. 17 years old so i'm like yeah. i didn't see it as like a super long relationship they probably had only been together like maybe at the most like a year and that's like pushing maybe. and i feel like yeah. yeah i feel like maybe like a few months you know yeah yeah we, i mean if you're talking about let's say five six months yeah i want to say right? probably that sounds probably closer to like what it actually could have been bro we ain't seen each other in seven eight years and you expect what what you know what I'm like that doesn't that that's the one thing about this movie that just that bothered me because i was sitting here like there's i've had a couple of relationships that were that long about mm-hmm. like a couple months long mm-hmm if an apop- apocalypse hit after one of those relationships, there's no way in hell. There's no way in hell I'm I'm traveling 80 miles. Yeah, because like risking I had my life to to maybe reunite to with this what? person. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. I'll make it work with someone else. <laughs> yeah, I just I because like because I think about that too because like I had a relationship with somebody it was six months and like his family like called me their like daughter-in-law like they basically six like, months yeah wow and you that was basically a great impression huh i they loved me wow. i'm wonderful um <laughs> let's just put that out there hey why not um <laughs> parents love me um but yeah like that's like how close I was to this family and then like let's say we hadn't broke up right then and like this apocalypse happened mm-hmm. like I don't, I don't know. Like if we got separated, like maybe I would try to get back to that family. Like if I wasn't with like my own family, like if what happened to to his character, his parents got crushed. Like they got crushed. Day one, like they were trying to get away. They had just packed up the car and were like driving to wherever they planned on going. And the parents just got smushed by a giant bug. Um, I'm trying to figure out why was he holding the chandelier? I think it was like something that the, the, I think they mentioned it and I forgot to go back and re-listen to it, but I think it was just like a family thing. So like the mom was like, here, hold this. And I also, <laughs> Here's like, the thing. why are you bringing a chandelier? Why? Like, but, but how is it that in this entire time you're packing up mm-hmm. in like, you're like in hurry, not just like a plan pack, you're packing up to evacuate. Yeah. You have enough you have time. You have no idea where you're going to go. Gonna go. Like, ceiling and pull down a chandelier yeah i don't get how well i think i think they knew that that was gonna happen i think they knew that that was planned and that's why like the kids were just like out doing their thing and they're like oh looks like it's time for us to go you know so like i feel like they knew that it was happening yeah i feel like it was on the news like hey like this is happening you should like pack up your stuff so maybe they had time but like i still don't get it but you we saw the chandelier later Mm-hmm. um in his mm-hmm. little room so it's like it still made an appearance like it made it through everything but like yeah it was definitely like why are you packing up a chandelier like if i was yeah. if something like that was happening i'd be packing up my car with like like things to survive off of like food like weapons like anything water. that i had that i could yeah like water like my like maybe a, a, one of my good like pots or pans to cook with like something yeah, that, like that makes blankets, more sense than a chandelier. Like, yeah, but then a chandelier. I was like, bro, what are you doing? You, I can't um, carry that. Yeah, it, it's it's <laughs> it just seems like 
just like a silly a silly thing to have yeah Yeah, i i I, see there's only one person i would travel that type of journey for is only one that's it i Mm -hmm. i'm talking about same predicament all that stuff only i as i'm nah otherwise have you you talked to me about this person yes okay yes 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 so i i know who this person is (laughs) yes i feel like she knows i feel like (laughs) you know who which is annoying because he's a butthead but it's fine yeah it's it's, fine it's it's like you have to see that's another thing that's why i was kind of this is this is the thing that and we might go on this might go on a little tangent but (laughs) this is the one thing that irritates me about um and i know this is just a movie it's just a fairy tale all that stuff right but i think over the last year or two when i've been watching movies like this or others like even movies that that we that came out when we were kids the whole thing of i'm very fascinated how short of a time period it is for someone to say i love you yeah it's very fascinating it's like it's like days in and like they're like you're the love of my life i love you with my whole heart i'm like homie yeah, like you've known each other for like six hours like, like ah that's why like i think that's why amy was thrown off too because yeah it, it didn't seem as if it was something that she felt like at that i mean yeah it did say when they when they separated or something like that i love you but yeah it the wasn't world like, is ending. A, like yeah I, I, <laughs> the world you yeah. know is ending so i yeah, don't expect definitely... that to be something that you wouldn't say but then you reconnect at the, with someone you had seen in seven years you yeah you haven't seen them for a longer period than you were even together mm-hmm I think it's like I like how they did it though because I feel like normally it's always like the girl that's like feigning after the boy. I feel like Mm -hmm. that's always like this trope. I did. I did like that. Yeah, I did. So it was kind of the opposite, um, where he was like, "I loved this girl. I'm gonna go try and just see her again, and she's gonna love me too." But then it was like, "Oh no, she doesn't." Um, But then like I was just so stressed like the whole time. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Sorry, my my google just like popped up so like suddenly like a bunch of i thought it closed oh okay. because <laughs> google just popped up and my screen went blank and i was like oh god what's going on <laughs> um but like he went on this journey everybody thought he was gonna die basically everybody that he lived with was like you're gonna die like this is stupid. he thought he was You're doing gonna this. die yeah he thought he was gonna die he was like i have nothing i don't like I have nothing else to live for like what the heck yeah. like, might as well try to go do something yeah um but yeah so he's like traveling through um comes across this dog its name is literally just dog yeah um (laughs) which i I think is cute um i wish he had given it like an actual name but that dog was the such a great little doggy actor so good um but uh so he's traveling with this dog comes across um what's his name and the little girl hold on let me pull up their thing Oh, Clyde and uh, Minnow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Michael Rook, Mike Michael Rooker, 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 and uh, uh, Ariana Greenblatt as Minnow. Um, so Michael Rooker, if you guys don't know his name, you maybe um, he plays Yondu in Gardens of the Galaxy. He is. Let's see something else that. Is like he's walking in, dead yeah i was like he's been in that um let me see here suicide squad as savant um I'm trying to think see I'm, I'm going through his thing to see if there's another like big um credit for him yeah other than merle dixon and walking dead he's in a bunch of episodes of that fast and furious he was in oh. fast and furious movies what uh nine and ten up oh. Yeah, oh, I haven't a- seen the I haven't seen the most recent one. Yeah, I haven't seen a, the last one either. Oh my god, I forgot he was in Repo the Genetic Opera. That was a great movie. He plays a repo man. Um Slither plays Grant Grant. Uh it's so weird because I'm like looking at him like 
I recognize he's one of those faces that you recognize. Oh, he's in Tremors. The, oh, the mm-hmm. TV series. Oh, so the one that like never actually happened. Um, he was in, he's in so much stuff. It's like a face that you know, but you never really like know his name. I feel like up until recently, he wasn't like a like a name that you knew as much. If that makes he was, sense, his name was I knew his name after The Walking Dead. Well, yeah, like, I mean, like, prior to that. But I feel like I've seen yeah. him in stuff for, like, ever. He's one of those faces that's been in stuff forever. So he, he's in it. I loved his character. He plays Clyde. Clyde is basically just, like, a nomad mm-hmm. dude that, like, goes around. And he is with little Ariana Greenblatt, as in, who plays Minnow. She did um, a phenomenal job. She's such a great little actress. She's also the little girl that was in Awake. The one that could sleep because she drowned. Wait, what? The movie Awake. I don't think I saw that. Didn't we review it? I don't think so. I really thought we did. It's um with I really thought we did awake. It's with um Gina Rodriguez. No, 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 no. She plays a mom. No. Of two I kids. Never, no. Never saw that. Uh-uh. <gasps> oh my goodness. It's on Netflix. Um, it was okay. It wasn't a great movie, but it was okay. But the, she, as a little little child actor, was did very well in it. Um she hasn't been in too much. She's only been in like a handful of things. Um, but she was in the Dancing with the Stars Juniors, Live and Maddie. She played a character in Legendary Dudas. Disney Channel stars, DuckTales theme song, A Bad Mom's Christmas. She plays one of the kids in A Bad Mom's Christmas. Uh, Oh my God, Young Gamora. That's right. She plays uh, like baby Gamora in Infinity War and Avengers. Oh, that was her. Yeah, that's her. Oh. That's what I was like. I was like, she was in something else really big. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Now, you know what? Even with the makeup, I could see her face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I was like, I was like, what the heck was it? But that. That's um, right. she's and she's been in a bunch of things since so she's now uh stuck in the middle um was a show she's in 57 uh yeah 57 episodes of that so she's a main character in that then love and monsters she's in scoob as young velma the one and only ivan in the heights she plays young nina um awake the boss baby as the voice of tabitha and a couple things in post-production so she's doing a lot um and i am i'm all for it she is a perfect great little actress she's such a good little actor um i loved her characters like every character i've seen her play she's great but yeah she's a really great little actress and i can't wait to see like where her career goes um definitely which is crazy because sometimes like with kid actors they're either gonna you can either see them like being an actor for the rest of their lives or you see them like being that kid actor that like kind of fizzles out fizzles out yeah no she's absolutely not fizzling out she's great i love her yeah um but she did a really good job um and so dylan's character joel meets up with clyde and minnow and they start their journey because they're like like i said like nomads so they're just kind of wandering around and they teach him like a bunch of different things on like how to survive out there. And that's basically the only reason why he survives yeah, is because yeah. he, he gets taught how to, how to do everything. But like, I liked it. I don't, I don't, I do. <laughs> I like, don't like that. They did eventually end up together at the end. Um, Joel yeah. and Amy like that. Yeah. I'm kind of like annoyed about, I like, I'm sad that like her partner like died. I wish that her partner like didn't die so that like they could have been like, he could have been like, Oh shit. Like you are with somebody else. Cool. But he does kind of like realize that. And then like realizes that, Hey, like I made it through this. We can all make it through this. Like we can live with these monsters because not all of them are bad. Yeah. And that's one of the big things is you can tell in their eyes is what Mm -hmm. they talk about. You can see mm-hmm. it in their eyes that they're whether they're a good monster or like a bad monster. And uh when the like kind of climax of the movie happens and the bad guys, which I fucking knew were bad from mm-hmm. like moment one, when mm-hmm. so what happens is these people show up at um Amy's settlement 
um, because she's like on the coast. And (laughs) she's running a nursing home, basically. Yeah, she's basically (laughs) running a nursing home. Um, And so she, this guy shows up with his yacht with like a couple people on it. And it's like a really beat up yacht. But he has trained a giant um, Crab. crab to basically pull the boat around because there's no more like gas or anything so he like trains the trained this crab to pull the boat around for him um using like electricity so he shocks it and he shows up at their thing basically tries to tells them that like there's a place for them that everybody can go that's like a new development or like a new place where people are thriving and like we're going to all survive. So he gets them to pack up all their supplies and leave their settlement and packs it up onto their boat mm-hmm. just to be like, Hey, just kidding. Uh, we're yeah. just leaving you all here. We're just stealing all your <laughs> shit. Bye. Yeah. Um, but then uh, it like ends up like backfiring on them. And then the crab that was being tortured by this guy ends up getting off its chain and Dylan's character is like, um, sees in his eyes that he's not a bad crab yeah and he manages to free him from the the electrical chains and then the crab goes and takes care of the bad guys and tears down their boat and <laughs> goes off and lives in the ocean yeah um so they realize that there are ways that people can survive with these creatures and that they don't have to live underground and hide underground anymore and i think that's really cool um and i was looking up it's not based on like anything like it's not based on a comic book it's not based on like a book it's kind of like a pretty norm like a pretty uh uh like independent story um so yeah it was a it was a script uh it was called monster problems and was based on an original script by screenwriter brian duffled so yeah so like it's literally like an original story which oh, okay. we don't really see that much i thought it was based off a book at first but it's not um so it's cool there's potential for a second one no um no i saw somebody like right i saw when i was looking up love and monsters it pulled up love and monsters 2 um why let's see let's see what what more could they tell from the story Okay, hold on. So there's been no confirmation. It's difficult to predict when the sequel will be released. However, if a sequel is planned and produced, filming will begin in early 2022 with the film expected to be released in the summer or mid-year of 2023. Um, But I mean, it could just be like... um, So this is as of August 5th. A sequel has yet to be confirmed. Um, April 15th. Okay, October 13th is a little bit sooner. Love and Monsters 2 release date confirmation on Netflix 2021. Love and Monsters at 2020 film starring Dylan O'Brien. It's released on the Netflix in October 2020. Got lots of praise. It was also nominated for an Oscar for Best Visual Visual Effects. The comedy and action packs monster movie, blah, 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 blah. We already know this. We talked about all that. Um Love and Monsters came out almost a year ago, but Love and Monsters 2 is yet to be confirmed. So it's not confirmed yet. Despite the success of the first movie, the makers haven't said anything regarding a sequel yet. Fans might be in for some disappointing news because there aren't any hints about a sequel happening as of now. It seems like the makers had only planned on having one movie. Having said that, we need not lose hope just yet. So We don't need a sequel. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think think it's it's one of those movies that like could absolutely start like a Fran- like I guess like a franchise and create like a second maybe a third just on like how the world um heals I guess but and like the conflicts and stuff that happened with that so I can see it being turned into something but also like it doesn't need it like it's one of those no. films that like ends in a way that like ends where you can kind of interpret it whatever way you want and like yeah. it ends well there's a picture of dylan o'brien in this article and he just looks so great in it <laughs> so nice I, I feel like if we if they do this into a series we're going to eventually see him jump on a butterfly and fly out of space <laughs> to to break up a meteor oh my god coming to it. i don't want to th- just leave it just leave it this is this is good for what it is 
not everything that not every movie that comes out that does well needs a sequel yeah i agree with that like i don't think it has to to. now the harder they fall i want to see a sequel for that i haven't finished it i it was again like the same thing i was telling you earlier before we started recording i was watching red notice and like was falling asleep and had to like do stuff so i and it was the same with um that i literally got like an hour in and I was just like dozing because I was so fucking tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I'm I'm gonna have to just rewatch it because I don't think I picked up like anything because I think I was like nodding off while watching it. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to definitely actually. Well, we could we could actually do a review on that one next week. I would know. love to. I, I wanted to. I wanted to ask. Phenomenal. I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. We everything that I it. everything that I saw was like oh ah, yeah, ah. yeah. Like, the whole time I was like oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah. until i started to fall asleep but um yeah it definitely looks like a really really cool movie and i do want to watch it i just need to like be awake yeah. <laughs> i need to be like yeah uh, attuned to it yeah this um, one this one this one does not need a sequel i i liked what what it was i thought it was a good uh a story uh a good balance of romance and comedy um which is great and it's yeah. i feel like there was more comedy in it but also keeping with like the seriousness of like the situation yeah, but then yeah, there was yeah. like a little bit of romance to kind of keep people going which was nice yeah yeah just leave it alone i don't want to see anything else because you're going to water the series down i'm wondering if maybe instead of like a sequel maybe like a spinoff of potentially like another colony or something like somewhere else in the world like where else were things affected but again i don't know like what they would do with it but yeah um so on a scale of one to ten what do you give this movie excuse me um (laughs) i'm i i'm (sighs) i'll give it 8.5 okay i was thinking about like 8.5 as well why 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 8.5 because there's no way in hell you fall in love with someone (laughs) <laughs> that fast and then you're still in love with them seven to eight years seven years like later, there's, yeah there's no there's no reality there's like That's, there's like the reality I mean, is like there's definitely still people that i met like years ago yeah. that i like have still little crushes on that i know are never gonna actually happen <laughs> because they're like married now but like you never know but <laughs> But honestly, like in reality of it, like, yeah, like that kind of like romance is just like, it's just weird. I didn't like it. Yeah. But otherwise, 100% would rewatch this movie. I did like the movie. I love Dylan O'Brien. So I'm pretty much like a, a sucker for whatever he's in. I will give mm-hmm. it a good review. Um, just like it was good. The the combat and it was good the visual effects i'm so glad it was nominated for an oscar when i because i didn't know that um until i was looking looking it up because i was like damn when did this movie come out like when would it have been like um would it have been released in time to be considered for um an oscar for like the visual effects but the visual effects literally were phenomenal like whoever yeah. they had doing their visual effects just needs to do visual effects for like every movie that needs CGI or whatever because they phenomenal. Um, IMDb rated it uh, seven stars, um, okay. and there's a hundred and eleven thousand reviews. So uh, that's a quite that's a lot. Quite a lot of people have uh, reviewed it. Primarily sevens. You got a bunch of a bunch of tens, a bunch of nines, eights, um, but seven is the highest um rank on it at 40,000 reviews. Yeah. So I think for like a fi- like an 8 8.5 falls in like the majority of where these votes are coming from. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think um, I think it's I think it was a good movie. I mean and, and I'm, I and I said not based into in reality knowing full well there's no such thing as giant frogs and and crabs yeah. and all this stuff. So yeah, I mean I guess in that sense there's no reality mm-hmm. but yeah it just certain parts of it i can understand things being a catalyst for different actions and stuff like that but 
that I mean, between that and the chandelier, those are the two things I'm, I'm just the like questioning. I just, I just, I just, just like, I'm not why? Getting, I just not but I guess like maybe things. like it's like his one thing from his parents that he was able to like hold on to. Grab a little lamp, a little desk lamp or something. Yeah, it didn't I don't have know. to be. It didn't have to be a chandelier. A, a chandelier, yeah. a chandelier yeah. is huge. Super, it was <laughs> just very strange, a very odd thing for him to keep. My parents have a hoping... chandelier in the dining room, and I'm not carrying that. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I was it's hoping heavy. that he would like build a weapon or something with like the char- like the gems or something. I don't know. That he would like yeah, utilize it before he left, but then he like didn't. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like I want to say like an 8.5. I enjoyed it thoroughly. It's got a good rewatch value. So if anybody wants to watch it, um, yeah. we I would recommend it. Like if you're looking for something that's like not super serious, something kind of fun, but has some like like drama in it, but not like stupid drama. Like I it is fairly predictable in some things. Like I definitely predicted a lot of things, but there's also mm-hmm. things that just like threw me off a little bit, but I, I liked it a lot. I genuinely yeah. very much enjoyed this film. I love Dylan O'Brien. I, we should have a counter for how many times I say I love Dylan <laughs> O'Brien because it will be like 40, but I love Dylan O'Brien. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this movie with it's great. Yeah. Great casting. Um, oh, yeah. It was really good. Yeah, really good all around. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed for Netflix. They're doing pretty good. Yeah, or not Netflix. I'm sorry, Hulu. Yeah. Was this? Was this? I no, think this, this was, was originally actually, on Netflix. I think. I think this was. Did this release like theatrically? I don't. Or was I, it supposed I doubt it. to? It probably was supposed to. I doubt me, if it came out me, last year that it released in theaters. But yeah, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think this was briefly on Netflix. Yeah, release date Netflix. So it looks like it was October 16th, 2020 on Netflix. Okay. So it was released on Netflix. Okay. Um, I'm curious if it was originally supposed to be on Netflix or if it was supposed to be like a theatrical release, but because of COVID, it got pushed back, which is very likely. Possible. And it's possible they um, just went ahead and just bought the uh, the licensing for it for what about six seven months something like that maybe yeah Um, but it's on hulu now so if anybody wants to watch it that is where you can um but now speaking of more netflix are we ready for our second movie we want to take a little quick breaky break and then hop into our second movie which is red notice yes ma'am all right we'll be right back Hi, hello, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between. My name is Jessica Lemon, and I am the host of Sour, Sweet, and Spooky, a paranormal podcast with a little true crime squeezed in. Because where there's paranormal activity, there's got to be some kind of true crime involved, right? I talk about ghosts, aliens, murder, cryptids, urban legends, conspiracy theories, and more. Stories from all over the world for you to enjoy every week. So check me out on social media at Sour Sweet Spooky and pretty much every platform that podcasts are found and be ready for a brand new story. Oh, and remember, stay sour, stay sweet, stay spooky. So the next movie that we're going to talk about is Red Notice. It just came out literally only a few days ago out on Netflix. It stars Dwayne Johnson, Ryan Reynolds, and Gal Gadot. Um, it came out oh in select theaters on November 5th but everywhere on Netflix on November 12th which was four days ago it'll be Friday, be Friday right yeah yeah um, the tagline which is kind of funny after watching the movies an Interpol agent tracks the world's most wanted art thief which is played by several people yeah (laughs) so um this was filmed was this filmed over a quarantine was this filmed i think it was uh, Um, last year i think mm -hmm. so something that's you know small cast which makes sense a lot of the people that were in it that were not the main few people were usually in like tactical gear with like masks on and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's like very like trickly, trickly, 
tricky <laughs> hiding, like having a bunch of people on sets and stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's super interesting. So the movie starts off with, um, it's like a, almost like a history channel thing talking about Cleopatra's eggs and that mm. there are these golden eggs that she was gifted at some point and um, they were thought to be like a myth. And then in like the forties, they unearthed two of the eggs and one of them was never found supposedly. And so, oh goodness, I'm so sorry. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the eggs um, was never found. And so the movie starts off with um, a fake egg being made and uh, the inspector, uh, Inspector Das, who's played by Ritu Arya, who was also in um, the Umbrella Academy. She plays the, you know, when they like are in like the psych. Ward. You know what? I didn't watch Umbrella Academy. <gasps> I watched like, I like, I think I watched like the first two episodes. I didn't. I stopped after that. You need to watch all of it. Sorry, I. You need to watch. It's really good. I, I really. I, it definitely I started, takes a couple then, episodes to get into, but it's yeah. such a good show. Um. Anyway, so for our listeners who <laughs> who actually watch things, um, she is in the Umbrella Academy. Um, she plays uh, Lila in that. Um, and she plays like the main, kind of like detective, but like inspector. And then Dwayne Johnson plays John Hartley, who is a profiler for the FBI. So he kind of figures out why people do the things that they do and can based on the crimes that they're committing he's able to basically a behavioral analysis yeah kind of like be like all right well this is what you're looking for based on like everything like this is the type of person i might not have a name but i've got everything else about their life yeah yeah Um, which is creating a profile it's crazy it's so cool because i I was listening to like true crime and stuff like it's wild how accurate some of these things can be. So it's like when mm-hmm. they're like, hey, we're looking for a man of this description who likely does this or says this or has this, um, possibly has like this or this, likely left-handed. It's like, what? Like, and they're able to like figure all that out just bound based on like actions and stuff. It's really cool. So that's who Dwayne, Dwayne plays. He works for the FBI. He plays um, John Hartley, the like a now uh uh like suspect analyst i guess <laughs> so uh john hartley and inspector das are working together to try to catch the elusive art thief um who turns out to be mr ryan reynolds playing nolan booth um and then there's this like really fun chase between the two of them and there's just a lot going on um yeah, that was a weird scene. Yeah, every honestly, like everything about this movie just like flows so well. And then like the twist at the end is one of those ones that you like kind that was of a expecting. Good one. I didn't it's expect like, that. I was like, what if though? But like there's no way. And then yeah. it happened, and you're like, yeah. wait a second. <laughs> so um we are about to put in some spoilers here if you have not watched the movie. It is on Netflix. Uh, if you don't have a Netflix account, I'm sure somebody you know will let you use their login so you can watch this movie because that's what everybody does. Um, <laughs> sorry, Netflix. Sorry, every streaming service. Um, everybody shares their passwords. It's fine. Um, it's funny. There's a billboard on Sunset mm. here in LA. And uh, whenever I drive past it, it's it's like a Netflix billboard. So it's always got – it looks like um, – it looks like those like marquee boards where you like put the letters in yeah, yeah. Like, whatever movies playing or whatever. So it looks like that, but they had one. It was like Ryan Reynolds uses his mom's Netflix password. I saw a picture uh, of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's off sunset. That so that's uh, okay. I see that. I see that like pretty often because I'm over that way pretty regularly. So like every time I see that one, it was like um the last one was for you when you was out. Um mm-hmm. which I saw it was like, yeah, it was like our favorite stalker 
um, John Go- jo- uh, Joe Goldberg, um, our favorite non-stalker Penn Badgley. It's the same person. <laughs> it was something like that, but it, it was it was cute. So they they've been doing some cute ones for like every like major release that comes out on Netflix. So right now it's Ryan Reynolds uses his mom's Netflix password <laughs> or something like that. Um, so yes, Netflix is aware that people use passwords. So go ahead and yeah. take your parents or your friends and watch this movie because we are about to spoil it. Yes, um, it's, it's so, okay. at this point, if you if you watch the show, you, you know we're know. gonna spoil some stuff. Yeah, this this, this is a spoiler show. So. Yeah. Um. So Ryan Reynolds' character steals the egg. Um, he does eventually get arrested, uh, not at the museum. Somehow, Dwayne Johnson finds Ryan Reynolds' home in, like, Bali, and it's just there. Yeah. Like, he before just, like... He is. Yeah, before he is. So Ryan Reynolds' <laughs> character shows up, and he's like, I'm a free man. And then suddenly the light turns on, and Dwayne Johnson's like, hey, you thought. Yeah. <laughs> and so then everybody rushes in. Ryan gets... Um, arrested and then they are about to transport the egg to a safe space in a museum or something when one of the guards who you can see is Gal Gadot yeah. um, you can't see that, that was, if it's that was her, a her. Bad like, up. you knew it was her um, oh, I could tell by the eyes that yeah a, that, that's the yeah. thing like, you can tell by the eyes so her character yeah. is in like tactical gear her face has got like a face mask like she's covered up but you, we just, I think it's just because we know Gal Gadot is like one of the main characters in the movie. So we're like, that's Gal Gadot. Yeah. Um, also, she's just very distinguishable um, because she's wonderful. They could have just put um, a helmet on her and, and, and to hide it. Yeah, but like, anyway. So yeah. <laughs> they close the egg in the truck. Uh, she opens that back door, switches the eggs out, closes the door again, and they drive away and she is underneath the car. Once the car drives away, she gets up and she's like, haha, I have the egg now. Um, Miss Gal Gadot plays the character of the Bishop who is supposed to be one of the most prolific art thieves in the world. And it's always going between um, the Bishop and Nolan Booth that are like, I'm the best art thief. I'm the best art thief. I'm the best art thief. It's like, oh, you're the second best art thief. Like, it's, how does it feel to catch the second best art thief? They're like, listen. Um, so because Gal Gadot steals the new one, there are the real egg. She puts a fake one in there. Everything seems fine until Inspector Das realizes that the egg is fake that they have. And she basically is like, um, I don't trust you, John Hartley. Uh, you stole the egg. And he's like, I literally didn't do that. Like, what are you talking about? Um, so she arrests him and both him and Nolan Booth end up in some Russian prison together where they start to conspire to get out because Dwayne Johnson's character is like, I didn't do this. Like, I'm not, like, I shouldn't be here. There's no reason for me to be here. He, so they come up with a plan to escape they escape because like that's just what uh uh ryan reynolds character does because he makes a joke about how many times he's escaped from places um and he was like i'm six for six and then he'll be like one more and i can get a um what did he say like a jacket he said one more escape and i can get a shawshank jacket i think oh shawshank yeah yeah Yeah, yeah, something like that (laughs) um it was funny yeah. But so they both end up in prison. They escape somehow. <laughs> they escape a <laughs> Russian prison on the top of some mountain where the only way to get on and off is with a helicopter. Um, and they steal a helicopter and they. That he knows how to fly with all the buttons. That he knows how to know how to fly. In Russian. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Okay. Because I think this, I think I felt this like during the first scene when they, when they were running around the art museum. Okay. I like The Rock, okay? Don't uh-huh. get me wrong. I, I, especially as a wrestler, one of my favorite wrestlers, okay? But I felt so annoyed by him in this movie. Really? I, like, <gasps> highly annoyed. 
Why? by him. Ah, he didn't fit. <laughs> he did, like like he just, physically or no, like because <laughs> he definitely gets stuck a few times, and I feel like that's some of the most realistic yeah. shit I've seen in one of these action movies. Oh, without question, especially when 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 Ryan jumped through the the, the, uh, the doors he like he, he like oh my oh God. yeah he got yeah he got shut and caught in the door he, he Dude, couldn't dive through the scaffolding. my favorite part is when Ryan Reynolds like falls into like the the uh like the bo- those like outside booths like the tent tops mm-hmm. and yeah, 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 yeah. off and falls oh, off and the rock hilarious. just crashes yeah. through yeah. and I was like oh my god <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious I no it just it somewhat similar to to will smith we had this discussion before about okay. will smith about being one-dimensional with his characters very like much the same person every time every m- uh, movie it's him it's the same thing with the rock but i i get it more so like in the fast and furious type of roles mm-hmm. walking tall like I, like I get it with those movies I, yeah this didn't seem like it needed that. Okay. This this felt like it was. <sighs> it felt a little forced. But I think that works with the character because the end reveal. Yes. Because it's 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 almost like later in the movie, like once we know who he is, mm-hmm. it's like. Oh, that makes sense. That's why, like, it was so forced. That makes sense. I didn't <laughs> You're think like, about it like that. Because if you, but... if you, because if you, if you think about like the movie, so during all of it, he's like, "I'm a cop. I'm the good guy. I'm, I'm a good man." And then, spoiler, <laughs> we find yeah. out that he is in it with the bishop. Um, Gal Gadot, they're in a relationship and they're both an art thief, the art thieves, the biggest art thieves in the world. Yeah. And as soon as that's revealed, it's almost like he's a completely different person. Yeah. Okay. So let me put it like this. One, it, it, it felt like that was a great, great reveal because I, I didn't see that coming. Great okay. twist. Yeah. Great twist. The problem I didn't see it coming that, in that way. I had like yeah. a thought on like, what if he really is the bad guy? But I didn't uh-huh. think that was going to be the case. Yeah. The problem that I have with it is how in the hell do you have that high of credentials in, in FBI and you're doing this as an art thief? Well, that's, how? how, like, how is that even possible? Well, that's kind of how the thing they have is like, he, they have they, every, think of the background checks they got to run on, on people. Well, that's what I mean. It's like they have access to literally everything in some right. way or form. They have access to create fake documents. They have all of that that can be put in. Like entire histories can be like fabricated mm-hmm. with the with, like with the access that they have to the technology that they they can use to create like these fake people. Mm-hmm. So you know, sometimes people don't question it. So really, I'm I'm I feel bad for Inspector Doss because she literally was like, I don't trust you. I've known you for a couple of days. Like, and this thing already goes missing. Like, you're the bad guy. Like she knew. Mm-hmm. But we we didn't we thought that she was just being stupid. Like as a viewer. We were like, there's no mm-hmm. way she really thinks it's this guy. Like he he's an FBI agent. Like, and mm-hmm. then they play it off with Gal Gadot as the bishop being like, oh, I just intercepted the call. But like, how many calls has she intercepted in the past to get John Hartley to be in the position that he's in? You know, like they probably, he's probably traveled like all over the place to like move up in the, in the thing and been able to do it because of all the fake shit that they create, they were able to create as these like con artists. And that's what they do. They create these personas that make it so that they can exist in the world so that they can exist in the world without really necessarily needing to hide they can hide in plain sight plain sight yeah i i'm just like i get that Mm -hmm. but if you're if 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 like okay the higher ups, his higher ups, mm-hmm. 
how in the hell do they not see any of this well if you're in different like different like um sectors i guess of like companies and stuff like even me when i was i mean it's not the fbi but i was like an assistant manager at a store Mm -hmm. you know i have no clue who the people are like here in los angeles i was a manager you know what i mean so like sure so like i'm saying like in his case though well in his case he wasn't like a spy or anything he was just like a profiler so sometimes right. maybe not necessarily he was like officially an FBI agent. He was just brought in by the FBI because he's such a good profiler. So like those background checks could all be fake. Like they could have faked all of that. Or he could have just, he's the, the face he of it. it. Yeah, he's the face of it where he has everything like set in order and like everything's good to go. And she's the one that does all the business. Like she's the one who takes care of everything. And he kind of jumps in from time to time. But like, we have no background on him like even when he's talking mm-hmm. to nolan booth about like the background like he doesn't really go into anything so we have n- we know nothing about him yeah i it's just something about him just <laughs> just <laughs> running the, the rock way. johnson I, I don't, it just it just felt so forced like him like there was there was cuz i'm th- i thought back to like with, uh, what was that movie? Uh, Central Intelligence that he did with with uh, Kevin Hart. Oh my god! Like that... you know, what's really bad. <laughs> the one guy that came <laughs> off the plane when he was like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Favor, for like for like a split second, I was like, is that Kevin Hart? And then I realized it wasn't Kevin Hart. And I was like, damn it! How yeah. funny would that have been if that was that would have been that would have been a good placement. That was so fucking good. It's just is like that didn't feel forced. That felt like more okay this one felt a little forced and and i don't know why i can't get over it like i well, like going and like into I, like the first scene i was like him just getting out the car walking to the building it was just like yo like why like, oh my god <laughs> he crashed that porsche oh uh, that hurt my feelings that hurt my feelings because it was like that was funny that it was funny because he was like oh. <laughs> he got like 10 feet the comedic relief in the movie was really good it's just oh like, my god one of my favorite parts comedy moments i'm sorry i don't mean to cut you off no, you're good. Um, one of my favorite comedy moments was when they're like in the kitchen doing stuff and ryan Reynolds goes why do you have a hairnet you yeah. have <laughs> and he was just like stared at him he was like shut up like <laughs> it was so that was funny but that there's yeah. so much of that in this movie and i think that's what makes this movie so great is yeah. that it's really action-packed it's really funny you get it a is. really good it twist is. towards the end and it opens it up for like potential future movies if we wanted to see more like things from these guys which i think again doesn't need to happen but could be really cool um to see I, whatever i i love heist movies they're like if I had to pick like a genre of movie that I would just love to be in more than anything in the world, it'd be, it's like a heist, like treasure hunt type thing. So like any of the national treasure movies, something like this, where they're going for the egg, um, heist movies, like oceans. in oceans, the oceans movies, brilliant. Um, now you see me. Um, yeah, I don't think I watched that one. Oh, those ones are good. There's a couple of them and they do like basically yeah. like heist type stuff. Um, yeah. There's another one that I saw recently and i can't think of the name of, oh it's uh one of the um fast and the furious movies where they steal the safe like yo i'm so tired of fast and furious <laughs> uh, that's why i said one of the because there's so that, many now the one you're talking about i think is five i think that i think that one was five, when they, you're talking five. When, they, when they stole when they stole the safe out like yeah out and they the go bank. like underneath yeah out of the like underneath the thing that was so but like oh so good (laughs) i love those kinds of movies because there's this huge plan that like suddenly makes sense at the end of the movie and it goes back and it does all these flashes of like this is why this is like that oh my god i can't believe i didn't see that stuff like brilliant movies like when those kinds of movies come out like and i feel like with the three of them they could do some more of those kind of like heisty type things but I know Ryan Reynolds said that he's like gonna not like retire, but he's gonna take a break from acting for a little bit. So he's yeah, like yeah. family and stuff, which makes sense because he's got like two or three kids now. Yeah. Um, Man, and we they're still waiting on Deadpool. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, so, that. And it's yeah. like it makes sense because I think Blake, she's doing more um 
behind the scenes work like she just mm-hmm. directed as her like direct- directorial debut she directed um taylor swift's music video oh did she one of them yeah not not the one all too well because i think somebody else did that or taylor did it her- i think taylor directed that herself um but whatever one they came out today i think i don't know she's like releasing one like every day um but one of them that she's just released like blake lively she um was the director of that music video so i think blake's gonna start doing a lot more work um because she hasn't she hasn't for a while she hasn't done too much she just she's done a couple things she did that movie with uh anna um not anna um no yeah anna kendrick Kendrick. yeah that was i was gonna say i was gonna say anna faris i was like that's not (laughs) um but yeah yeah so she did that with anna kendrick but she hasn't really done a ton of stuff but i think maybe she's maybe she's going to do more so that like Ryan can, can sit like, back with the kids and just chill yeah. for a little bit so that she can do like her own stuff with her career. Um, which I mean, and he's got a tequila uh, aviation that was, Oh my God, that's right. So that, that was, that's another thing. I was kind of, I was, I was kind of thrown off because this is, this is produced by the rocks uh, media company uh, seven, seven something. Um, or they're one of the producers on the film. And his his Terramano wasn't in the movie, but but Ryan uh, Ryan Reynolds uh, tequila was in the movie. I thought that was very interesting. Did you did you catch that? I I uh, no at I'm, Booth's I'm... at Booth's house in uh, in Bali uh-huh. when they're standing there talking. Uh, uh, he comes in. And he's about to. He pours himself a drink. Yeah. Yeah, when he turns around, if you look on the table, there's a bottle of aviation tequila sitting right there. That's funny. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that, and it was great placement. Like they just, they just put it right there. Yeah. <laughs> right in the foreground. How did I miss that? What the hell? Yeah, that was, that was a good one. Um, That's funny. So I, 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 I would, that. I would think that, that, you know, uh, they would put both in there and so, because you had the rock that was at a bar. Could have had could have been drinking Terramana right there, and then I uh, wonder if maybe it was and we just missed it. We probably missed it, yeah. I, I pro- yeah, I w- I'm gonna look back on that and see if that if that was. That makes Terramana. me want to like look it up. Yeah. To see. But I mean, it, it see Ryan to me, let like he he carried this movie. He carried oh, yeah. this movie and, and and did a phenomenal job with it. I think um, if they're going to do a sequel, this might be a. a not as great like a popular opinion i would like to see less of the rock and more so i don't i don't like i don't like disagree with that i feel like maybe i don't know i don't know what they would be able to do with like a sequel i feel like they definitely could do one um i'm also really glad that this movie is getting very good reviews and getting very good like like people are watching it like it's it's very popular because mm-hmm. this was Netflix being like, we're gonna produce this film. We're gonna we're gonna make this film. Mm-hmm. But if it does bad, we're not gonna do anything like this again. Yeah, um, I mean, and they and chose the right like, cast for it. Too. Well, that's the thing too. It's scary though because it's literally like the two most paid, the three. I want to say three of the most. Well, The Rock is the most, the highest paid actor in Hollywood mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. and then Ryan Reynolds and Gal Gadot both have are way fucking up there. You know, so these are and all three are superheroes. Yeah, and all three are literally superheroes. So it's like they're all very expensive people. Oh, for sure. To have (laughs) on a to have on a movie. For sure. So for them to make this movie, it cost them a lot of money. So like it needed to be good. Yes. And I think they they I think they killed it with it i think they really did a great job in creating a great movie and still it getting like good feedback getting people talking about it getting good reviews so that netflix can continue to make movies like this like yeah they can be like hey like they can go to investors and be like hey like we need we're gonna make this movie Mm -hmm. like it's gonna be good yeah um look at our track record you know so yeah, this was I don't like, think they'll have a problem getting a sequel going with this. No, no, no. but yeah, I, I do hope. Um, but not even just like this movie. Like, I think it's been hard for Netflix to be able to make like 
big box office kind of movies without having like big names. So I think this is something that like, hey, we can make a really great movie. Like even though we do have big names here, like we can still make really great movies and maybe yeah. have lesser big name, like lesser names in it. And I think that'll open up a lot of doors for a lot of people. Well, I think over the last couple of years, they've done some big name uh, 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 um, actors mm -hmm. in some big films that have done phenomenal. Yeah, they've uh, been Extraction, doing really, really well. Extraction is like one of the first ones I could think of that did a phenomenal job Maybe. with Chris Hemsworth. Oh, um, that's right. I forgot about Chris Hemsworth. You had that. You had the... Um, oh, God, they did... Uh... That one with Kevin smart Hart. Smart Girl or whatever. What's Smart Girl? Smart Girl, not Smart Girl. Um, what the heck? It was with Jason Momoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sweet Girl. Sweet Girl. Yes. <laughs> smart Girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, she was smart. Um, the Guilty was another one. Did yeah. that come out on Netflix? But I don't, I don't remember too much about that one, but it's Jake Gyllenhaal, so bleh, we don't talk about him. That was a good movie. We're not we're not talking about him right now. <laughs> it was good, but that was a that was you could tell that was done in during the pandemic because mm -hmm. it was just one location basically. Very like film. yeah. Yeah. So I mean like they they Netflix has a great track record with big names already. So I think mm -hmm. I think they're already showing themselves to be which is good. And I think trustworthy. what they yeah. with smaller name uh, actors. Yeah, and I think that's what's going to be really good is that they are able to showcase that they are more than just like a streaming service, yeah. that they are their yeah. own thing, that they can create these great films and really yeah. bring these stories to life. And they're not like half-assed, like they're, they're very good. Yeah. Their films um, and documentaries are just like amazing. So oh I, my yeah. God. You know what, you know what I really want to watch? I want to watch, um, uh, uh, Kaepernick, his, uh, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Have um, you watched that yet? I haven't checked it out oh, yet. Oh my God, I want to watch it so bad. I also want to watch, um, I keep seeing billboards for it, um, Passing. Yeah, I actually just saw a promo for it. A promo well, for it? I want- Not 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 the trailer, but just like a promo image. But just it. like just like an image for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, I know you don't watch trailers, you want to be like, but uh, but it's basically, it's about two women. Mm. Um, I don't know if both of them are mixed, um, or if just one is, but one is white passing. Mm -hmm. And so she lives in a world where she's white passing and she's about to marry a man who does not know that she is black. And her like best friend is like, does he know? And she's like, no. <laughs> and so, and it's like, <laughs> but, and it's during a time, it's during a time when like interracial yeah. relationships are like not allowed. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so I literally, I saw like a minute. It was like one of those like minute preview things for it um but i really want to watch it i really yeah think i think it's i think like i might one check of those, that out this week I, th I think it's gonna be one of those films that's like really powerful yeah you know what i mean yeah i'm i'm, I'm definitely gonna watch it this week because I, I just saw the promo image for us so i'm 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 gonna i'm gonna check it out yeah, i think it, um you know what i think i just realized what, what annoyed me about the rock in this movie <laughs> okay what because i couldn't put my finger on it it's it's when everything is supposed to be fast, he's incredibly slow. <laughs> it's because he's so big. He's he just so can't. <laughs> huge. He can't move. <laughs> so when when Ryan was what? when Ryan was running away from him. <laughs> I'm just thinking about when they're escaping the prison and they shoot yes. the, the the rocket launcher at the thing and he just turns around and he goes to start running. Yeah. And he's not going any faster than he was. <laughs> All he did was jump and hold onto the door and the rocket goes right past him. <laughs> but do you see what I'm saying? It's like another example is when they were like going through the woods and just just like trying to get through uh, like all these plants and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and and he's just walking incredibly slow. But and like Ryan is like, gone. Ah, Ryan, he yeah, he's he's chopping away <laughs> and the rock is just like, oh my God. <laughs> And another example was the bull. They're, 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 they're in the Coliseum and trying to run from the bull. They can barely, like, I mean, Ryan is gone. Like, the rock got plowed. <laughs> so that's what it is. I love the rock. I love him. <laughs> I'm so glad you had that realization because, I, like, I see it now. <laughs> he's so slow. 
He's just like, think about when he was chasing Ryan in that first scene. Just think about that. He was, he, and you know what annoyed and me? I was thinking like, about it too, because I'm like, he still managed to catch up with him. I'm like, bro, no, you're so- Not just catch up with him, beat him to his house in Bali. Like how the hell? <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> like, that's that's what it, that's what it was that's what it was it, i'm just thinking of like <laughs> like in movies when like people either get shrunk down or like you've got like a yeah like an ant and then there's just like a bigger thing or like yeah, a person yeah. and they're just like this <laughs> slow <laughs> you think you're going incredibly fast but you're barely uh... moving <laughs> That's what the rock was oh doing my in this God. movie. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> okay, I see it. I see yeah. it. Yeah. Oh so my God. <laughs> if because I mean the comedic relief was there. The the, the, yeah, the oh chemistry was there. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's just his movement was just like it like didn't fit the pace of the film. Like he was almost a slow-mo and, and Ryan was moving in like like high def. And he's just like <laughs> Like, uh, <laughs> spider-man into the spider-verse that's from like exactly, before he that's was, it that's to, it like after that's so it. that, that yes. like that like yes. frame rate <laughs> yeah the frame rate is just so slow he's he's moving incredibly slow <laughs> hey Dwayne Johnson if you're ever watching this we do love you so no, much I love I love the rock so much but Jesus Christ I man. don't mean to be laughing this hard <laughs> it's so funny he's so but slow. It, it's slow like it's just it's, and you know what it is it's, uh, it's not, I mean, it's him, but it's the way that they're shooting it. Yeah. It's the way they're shooting it. So if you don't oh do, if you don't do those wide shots and you do the extra close-ups, you can, you would not be able to tell the difference. <laughs> you would not be able to tell the difference. <laughs> they move at the same rate. <laughs> but you do so, that, like, that you do that, like, pull out. And like... Yes, yes, yes. Do the wider uh, 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 shots for, for Ryan uh. and the, and the close-ups for The Rock and a do chest up just just do just do the oh, cowboy man. shot and and we'll be good <laughs> oh my god that's exactly what it is it's that's, that's it's the movement that's what it is i'm sorry bowie did i get you worked up with my laughing i think he got stressed because i was laughing so much Jesus Christ. oh my god oh, yeah yeah my bad i love you Rob. no it's okay that's it though like that's that like that like now that you say it, it's like i i felt like something was off but like i was like i don't know it's fine it's just like a movie like it's not a big yeah. deal like whatever but yeah. like you saying that i'm like reflecting yeah. on the movie and i'm like you know what like that's what it is like it's yeah. that little thing oh my goodness Bobear. what are you doing yeah he, with your toy? yeah he, he just i'm so sorry he's he so just bad. um I, if they did a sequel mm -hmm. maybe <laughs> maybe the rock gets kidnapped and they gotta they 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 <laughs> that's funny too because he's fucking huge like he gets kidnapped like he gets what? kidnapped and and ryan and and gal have to figure out a way to to steal whatever artifact to get him back yeah something like that where the rock has little motion mm -hmm. i don't it's not enough not, not a lot of speed what what he's stationary was Jungle Cruise. He was in that. I was like, "What the heck?" Was I just he in? finished. I just watched that. You did? It's, yeah, I just it's watched good, it. That was, right? that was a good movie. Yeah, good movie. I feel yeah, like yeah. They, they did a really good job yeah. with that one. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But he's like, he's still like a an adventurous dude, but he doesn't do like a ton of movement. But like, yeah, yeah it's that's what I'm saying. Like, if if you just keep it here, just keep it right here. <laughs> <laughs> Where he's just Very like good. gets to run on a treadmill or something, doesn't have oh, to actually run through anywhere. On green screen, treadmill. <laughs> just, just go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Goodness yeah. gracious. Yeah. So my that was bad. a good laugh. I need it's okay. But... I needed that laugh. That was a good laugh. But love you, boy. <sighs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Jesus. No, so, okay. Yeah. But it was overall um, it was a good movie. I did. I liked movie. it a lot. It's something yeah. that I think I would watch again if I'm like in the mood for like something like fun and adventurous. Like I watch like the um the Oceans movies a lot. I watch I had to rewatch uh, those. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's um, been a long time. And then I've watched uh like the National Treasure movies. I watch those like all the time. Mm -hmm. I that's like the one thing I wish there was like a slight more like emphasis on them finding that vault that nazi vault yeah 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 that yeah. is like my yeah. only thing that i'm like there 
is so much. So they're, they're doing this thing. They're getting these, they're getting all three eggs, right. To give to some rich Egyptian dude whose daughter's name is Cleopatra with a K with a K so that (laughs) she can have all of Cleopatra's eggs. Yeah. Um, and so, oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, it was weird. T- I was like, what the heck? It's fine. It makes <laughs> sense. It's a, it makes sense. The text makes sense. Um, I feel like what was in that vault, like, was a million times more than what they're yeah. getting paid for that one thing. The like Mercedes the amount- in and of itself, dude said he could get twenty five million for it. Yeah, because it's one of four in the world. Yeah, he's like one of three. Oh, four. four. <laughs> and, but like, but the thing is, is like, it's those like something like that like absolutely exists. Like, there's so much art that was stolen by the Nazis that's been hidden that has not been found. Yeah. So yeah. like. Ah, that that alone would have been like which pissed me off as to why they just came in guns blazing yeah why the hell would you do that i'm like guys there's some pretty priceless artifacts in this yeah statues and and and... uh that bugged me but that's that bugged me at from like a like an archaeological point i was just like no or just like a like a like a history i don't know i don't know what it's called there's like something for somebody who enjoys like that kind of history buff not necessarily a history buff. There's like another term for it because it's not like archaeological things, even though like some of it is because it's from like ancient Greece. But then there's stuff like artwork that's just like appreciated. I don't know. I just I feel like that they're sh- they glossed over the fact that they just found like a Nazi. They they really glossed thing, over, it. and I f- like full of priceless artwork and artifacts and things that just like. Just, they just glossed over it yeah and then drove through the mountain <laughs> that was I, quite a chase oh yeah, my god that was but, yeah no i loved this movie i thought it was great um i love gal gadot so much i wish i was her <laughs> like her accent is the greatest thing in the world she's such a badass like she was in the military and she's just like i just wish i was her it, for real she was really in the military yeah, she was part of the Israeli military. Before becoming an actor? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, she was born in Israel. She was in... Um, hold on, let me see. Uh, born in Rosh Haya, Hayan, Israel. Her parents are Eret, a teacher, and Michael, an engineer. She served in the IDF for two years and then won the Miss Israel title in 2004. Gal made her film debut in the fourth film of the Fast and Furious franchise. In 2009. Uh, yeah. As Giselle. I had no yeah. clue. Yeah. Yeah. So she oh. was in the. Um, let me see if I can find any. Oh, she's married. Her. Oh, that's right. She had a baby mm-hmm. when they were filming um, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Did you ever see pictures of the behind the scenes picture of that? She had like a big green belly. <laughs> she no. had like all of she had her Wonder Woman stuff on because they had to do reshoots after they finished. They had to do reshoots and she was pregnant. So that she had all of her like Wonder Woman <laughs> stuff on, except for the belly was green. <laughs> she just had a green belly that they had to like CGI oh. away. Yeah, there's some if if uh if I find them out or just look them up. It's really funny. That's interesting. Um, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, because I did do a couple of reshoots and she was pregnant, so they were like, um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think um I think she she did a great job in this movie. Um I, mean, I think the movie was really good. I I would probably put it at I think her I might... maternal grandfather, who was from Czechoslovakia, survived Auschwitz. Her family, she's Ashkenazi Jewish, and her father is sixth generation Israeli. Um wow. so her grandfather was put into Auschwitz. Okay. Again, I feel like they glossed over was, the fact that they went to like a Nazi thing. Like I feel like her character could have really so, been like Yeah. Oh what yeah, they did not they really glossed over that one. I wonder if there uh, was like I wonder if there was like more 
you that think they, some like, stuff that, just got cut that out? Stuff got, stuff got got cut out. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, she did her two year military service. Yeah, she's literally such a badass. I love her mm. so much. She's wonderful. Yeah, now that's why I, she is Wonder Woman. I think. Um, yeah, just DC just doesn't know what to do with her. Um, I think that this was. I might give this an eight point five, as well. Yeah, I want. I, that's where I was thinking. I was thinking like eight, eight point five. Um, yeah. Just maybe, maybe like maybe like an eight point seven five. Not quite a nine, but not really like an eight five. Because like it's a great movie. Definitely got great rewatchability. Um, something I'd be like, hey, like let's watch this. Um, I'm hoping for more from these three. I think it, they they do work together really well. Um, Ryan Reynolds and The Rock, I think, do have good chemistry. And I think just Gal Gadot just being like who she is, being like thrown into the mix, just like added like the perfect amount of like spice, add a little spice. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I would love to see more of the three of them in something. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do like an 8.75. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's fair. That's fair. I just, some, some, I think I can't, I can't go anywhere above 8.5 just because the rock was just so slow in this. <laughs> I just can't do it. I'm just thinking of like giants when they're just, trying to like, hey, that's exactly, that's exactly, people, that's exactly where how where their felt. hands are like this. Yeah. And they're yeah. just slowly <laughs> going to grab the person and the yeah. person's like sprinting away and they like yeah. just missed them. And they're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> it felt like, it felt like, uh, like Shrek versus the gingerbread man. Oh my God. Or something like it was just, it was just weird. I just, Overall, though, Something they did threw a you job. off, and yeah. yeah. But overall, overall, I think it was a great movie. The twist was very good. The I twist liked was, that. I it was like, oh shit, did not see that coming. Yeah, okay, so, definitely. And I usually when, see it. Yeah, when I was watching it, the twist, I was like, oh shit, oh my god, <laughs> like you're working together. And then they're like, yeah, there's two bishops on a chessboard. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> I was like, damn it, that's good. That was, that was, that was very good. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think I could rewatch it just with some a lot of time in between yeah i feel like i could watch it with other people that haven't seen it or if i if i want to watch it maybe like in a year or so i think that'd be like a good i might time. give it two <laughs> i might give it two <laughs> um but no i enjoyed it i enjoyed yeah. it i'm i'm excited just in general the fact that like movies are like coming out more frequently again i'm just very happy i love movies oh yeah i love that i have the potential of possibly being in movies so yeah yeah look forward to seeing are- that yeah. It's happening. It's gonna yeah. happen. I promise. It's gonna happen. Yes, I don't man. know when, but it is. <laughs> I submit to stuff every freaking day. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yep. drawing. Yep. Just, just keep pushing. <laughs> but all right, I think I think we got enough for today. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. late for you. It's getting yeah. nighttime there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. I'm so sorry. No, it's good. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. So uh, go ahead and give everybody your uh, handles. Okie dokie. So, uh, personal stuff is just at Jessica Lemon with two L's because my middle initial is an L. If anybody's curious why I say that, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jessica L. Lemon. It's Louise, if you're super curious. Um, Mine is Lamont. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> Your middle name is Lamont? Yeah. That's um, a. It's, uh, I was talking to somebody super random. Sorry, I'm going yeah. tangent really fast. It was a customer, and their last name was. Um, uh lamond um so like lemon with like yeah so with a d at the end and they were we were talking and they were like and i was like oh my last that's funny i was like my last last name's lemon and they're like oh we might be related i was like what (laughs) and so we were like talking about it and about how like how when the like immigrants came to the states um Hmm. some like dropped the or some kept lemon some dropped or it was like lamond or lamont um, and they would like drop a letter or they would like add an M. So it was L E M M O N. And like, or yeah. And like, or change it to Lennon. So L E N N or L E N O N. Um, just to differentiate, the, differentiate themselves from the, like the Lamont or like Lamond. And I was like, whoa. Mm. And so we were talking about that. Um, and that's just funny that that's, that's very really- interesting. <laughs> that's um, very interesting. Yeah. 
but okay sorry uh so jessica lemon jessica l lemon on pretty much everything um i i really need to push on it but i am going to be uh doing some more with sour sweet and spooky hopefully in the next like week or so i'm still trying to figure stuff out um but i should be doing that pretty soon um my store manager is amazing i love her so much she's great um I don't know if she listens to this show. I know she was listening to Sour, Sweet, and Spooky, but Michelle, hi, if you're listening. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you. Um, she sent me a picture of her daughter wearing, uh, she was just wearing like a black t-shirt and I had given her my stickers for Sour, Sweet, and Spooky and she put mm. the Sour, Sweet, and Spooky sticker on her shirt and she was like, she wanted nice. it as a shirt and I was like, now I got to make shirts. She's like, I'll buy them if you do. <laughs> so um, I plan on working on some merch, but I definitely want to get some more episodes out before I do that. So I'm working on a few of those to be nice. Ready. So nice. Um, hopefully in the next few weeks so look out for that i know i said i was doing stuff in october but like my life fell apart it's fine yeah. um <laughs> but yeah so sour sweet spooky at jessica lemon and we've got at realish uh yes. underscore underscore realish we're still waiting on access for that yeah um, yeah we just got access to the facebook yeah um i think we talked about that in the last episode so you guys can talk to us there slowly but surely um, we are we are getting up but it, it's realish underscore on ig okay um just, so just realish on, on facebook i think yes so we should have access to that soon hopefully yeah. fingers crossed we're still trying to get that um you sir <laughs> what are your handles yeah so at derek underscore ots d-e-r-r-i-c-k um follow me there but you're not going to get much content from there so please follow ots <laughs> at ots media co all social media platforms uh ig facebook twitter instagram oh i'm sorry uh youtube youtube.com forward slash ots media ots media co i think that's what it is um <laughs> you f- just find a link in the bio on, on ig and, and follow that uh ots media co.com was a website check out all the articles we have up uh all the descriptions for the other shows rate and review uh for all the shows but especially for realish please we, we would love to hear uh um some feedback from you guys on what you want to hear us discuss um uh, what 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 uh films you want us to review um let us know how we're doing you know if if uh you know if you don't like my my tatum jersey behind me mm-hmm. let me know i'm not you gonna know what you know what you know, I, you know what you know what i don't like that's behind you what the fact that that helmet's not spinning again today yes how about this the helmet's not spinning but the eagles are winning so <laughs> <laughs> so it's gonna it's gonna stay <laughs> it's gonna, gonna stay, stay right put? there yeah i'm not okay. spinning that for the rest of the season <laughs> oh, right that's just a, it's just a few more weeks you know so was, okay what, what, once oh, the season is over then it'll spin also again. i think i was ta- i didn't i didn't talk to you about it but uh this i think might be one of the last times i'm recording in this room um, some more oh, life changes are happening and I'm going to be moving to a shared studio space in my apartment. Um, nice. my other roommate are just going to split a room. Um, awesome. somebody's going to come in here. I'm poor, so I can't afford two rooms right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but luckily, uh, one of my friends knows somebody who needs a space and I've met this person and they're nice. Cause I, I don't awesome. know if I told you we had a, yeah, yes. So yeah. <laughs> Awesome. We're gonna make it work. I'm mean, awesome. working, so this background might be different, which might be okay because I think it might be more like functional. I don't know. Okay. I'm figuring it out. Awesome, awesome. Well, we will see you all next week. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for listening. If you listen to us on any uh, 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 podcast platform, uh, we will catch you guys next week. Yeah. Bye, guys. I'm so excited to be back. Yeah, <laughs> it feels good. <laughs>